biological and technological distinctiveness to our own. Your culture will adapt to serve as us. Resistance is futile. Welcome to the Daily Atheist Morning Show. It is Saturday. We made it to Sci-Fi Saturday. It's my favorite. This is my favorite day of the entire week. Me and Miss Leanne, the amazing Super Leanne, were talking before the show about possibly. I I, I crave the the. I, I really want to do a a sci-fi reaction. Entire channel, nothing to do with nothing else but sci-fi stuff. <laughs> I love it. So. Good morning. I have got Miss Leanne Lord with me this morning. Good morning, Leanne. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing very well. I'm doing awesome. very well. Are you ready for some doom? We got some doom. Oh wait, wait. I have. Is this the is this the the Johnson movie with the devils and Oh, oh. Wait, wait, wrong movie. Oh, no. I watched the wrong movie. I'm kidding. Totally kidding. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'm a bad. And I, and I, I rewatched the movie, and I didn't realize <coughs> I hadn't rewatched it since I'd first seen it. Mm -hmm. So it oh, was really? like brand, yeah. So it was like brand new, and so like, be, well, we can we can get into it, but we'll, it was get, the, like, we'll get it. Let's get John. Yeah, in here. we'll get it. Let's get John. Yeah. In here. And we've also got John. John Hammond. He is a Dune nerd. There's other things about John you may care about, but today he's a Dune nerd. Good morning, John. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I, I don't went, meet me Dune nerds, man. That yeah. we feel like you know, fret within a fret, like just this little tiny group at the sci-fi cocktail party. <laughs> well, you yeah. know, I gotta say, the other day when last Saturday when you and I were, we anytime we briefly talked about Dune, he was just all about himself. So we just had to <laughs> had to invite the this guy my to the Dune series of all time. Yes, absolutely. So I watched it too yesterday. You watched it yesterday um, and this morning because I kept falling asleep. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I'm don't actually that was a movie or just you know it had been a long day. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Well, you know, I, I, my, my poor, sweet, loving, kind wife sat with me and watched this movie oh, yesterday. Dude. I know, I know. She, uh, she's, she's sweet. She did it. Uh, there were not a lot of things that she found redeeming, <laughs> but you know, she's not kind of into it though. You know, uh, the, the it was love director fantastic but and the yes. costuming costuming was not bad right? we we had a good time with some of the content because right at the beginning the guys show up with uh the what is he a stage three navigator and he they yeah. roll him in and they're they come out in these their black bag suits <laughs> yeah, those were actually i'm like where'd you get those suits bag. at home depot <laughs> did you say those were made out of body bags did you say no that? they yeah. look like oh where they're they actual body bags that were re-sewn into the costumes for the guild yeah they, they sure and look like trash bags costumes. what's that wow and for the sardaukar uniforms too they were those were old <sighs> body bags you know bad me like I did, you know. Normally, wow. I, I I encourage Miss Leanne to watch, go to IMDb and check out the trivia on stuff like this. And I did not yesterday. <gasps> I could have been this this Shocking. bag of knowledge. No, that's what we got John for because I didn't what? know that. Yeah, that's this cool. And a lot of I bet a lot of hairspray. I bet they they saved the, they used the body bags so like they would have money for the hairspray because woo. Yep. Well, yeah, you got Sting alone. That was like it's a lot of gel of for his hair. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, and Lady Jessica's quaff, well done. Mm, yes, yes, she was. She was. That was good looking that was stuff. Elegant. I like that. She's that was so awesome. beautiful. Yes, she was. Yeah. Too. And you know, she really. What do they call those suits that they wore? Still suits. Still suits. Yeah, she yeah. she rocked one of those too. That's in like an abbreviation. Wait, wait. Of is that a little Alia in the background? Do you have a little baby Fremen? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes. Yes, my son Asher. I'm Aww. trying to keep kids off the stream for, for Chris. But incidentally, my children act. Uh, my older two children actually are named Alia and Vlito. Vlito. <laughs> oh, so real, true Dune. Nice. Total Dune nerd. I admire that level of dedication, Sarah. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, true enough, true enough. I have to say though, it was uh, there was of course you know it was 1984. They did a great job for 1984. Some of the uh, it was a little melodramatic in its acting, but that's kind of how they how they pulled yes. it. 
Um, but then the scenes too, the the sets, big, huge, beautiful sets. Me and the wife, I was sitting there going, how did they build oh, yeah. that? You know, he comes out and walks around this corner and it's like this big, huge open thing with these big, beautiful arches. And then he turns and walks down this thing and it's this big, huge thing all the way down these stairs. I mean, there's a multi-floor sets, just gorgeous, beautiful, hundreds and well, hundreds of, of people. With like um, practical models and uh, matte paintings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's some really great perspective work in that movie. I did see some of that too. So some of the obvious where they'd done some of some of those things too. That was really cool for 1984. Yeah. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Carlo Rambaldi. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> now, one of the I, things I got. Oh, I'm sorry. Go sorry. Go ahead, Chris. No, no I was no, going to ask, John, how did you get introduced to Dune? Was it the movie or was it the book? Oh, it was the book, actually. Okay. So the book was first for you. Yes. Okay. I was the other way around. I saw the movie and went, what the what? <laughs> I, was, I was intrigued and confused enough to go read the book and then mm -hmm. down the rabbit hole the rest of my life with the books, the prequels, you know, all of it. So That makes sense. Well, when we watched it, you know, we talked, you and I talked about all the things. I asked the question, how do you, where do I catch up? Where do I start? You know, and people are like, you got to read the book. You got to do this. You got to do that to get the full. And I'm like, oh, you know, that's not likely to happen. But before the not show, the we week. decided to, yeah, right. We decided to watch the show. So we watched the movie. It did have a prologue, but I don't know. It was a three hour, and I, and I thought I was cheating. I was like, oh, well, it's got a prologue. This is going to tell us all the things that we miss if you don't know all the, well, it really doesn't. The prologue does not. It's, no, it's, it's just a prologue to the movie. No, it's a, it's and, a and the teaser. Wife was, if you know the yes. story, it's a teaser. It's like, okay, that's yeah. nice, but. That's right. And the wife was like, oh, wow. Okay. Three hour movie. Wow. We were, we're at an hour, hour and 10 minutes. And I was like, I'm glad that prologue is finally over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was it was my, the version we watched was on uh tv series.net i think the place is called and uh it's yeah, it was it was three hours long and they cut things that i remembered we actually had to go there was a scene where the floating guy baron harkonnen um well, and there's some that, controversy on how his name is actually pronounced but yeah harkonnen in the movie but it found in his notes it's really harkonnen Ah, ah, tomato, tomato. Anyway, tomato, okay. Tomato, tomato. Yeah, the floating fat man. Yeah, the floating the fat man. There was in. there was the scene where yeah, it was the emperor. <laughs> there was a scene where he attacks this boy and he pulls his heart plug out and he kind of. Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Well, they had cut that out of the one I saw yesterday, so I had to go right. find that on YouTube and show that to the wife. Really? Yeah. Oh, I saw I saw that in the version I had. Did I got you? it on iTunes and it just. Oh. Yeah. yeah. First of all, don't ever forget your iTunes password watching. while you're trying to get a movie. Anyway, I'm sorry, John. What did you say? The theatrical cut has the um, has the heart plug scene, and then the television cut um, reuses some FX shots. It takes the heart plug scene out, and it adds the prologue that has all the paintings and stuff. And mm. it's the year 10,191. Yeah. Oh wow. That's what we saw. That's right. the one we okay. saw. Yeah, I guess I saw the film version on iTunes. Three ninety nine, well spent, by the way. Ah, <laughs> I'm gonna watch well, it again while I'm either cleaning or cooking today. <laughs> true enough. Wonderful. It was. Yeah, I, I love the old sci-fi. It's one of those cornerstones of sci-fi that you're not really a sci-fi nerd, where unless you've been through this, whether you right, like it right. or not, um, right. kind of deal. It's just a badge of honor. I've seen this. Dune, I've I've seen right. it. You know? It's almost like you and, get another pip on your Star Trek collar. Uh, there like, you go. Seen Dune yeah. or a, and, a badge, a con badge. Like Real quick though. Yes. Yes. I, I want to say hi to everybody in the chat. I didn't. I didn't. We got so we had such a fun oh, intro. Yeah. So hi everybody in the chat. Tons of mice. Pasta Mike. Good morning, Pasta Mike. Uh, Kelly Sellers. Um, you, you, all you wonderful people. Good morning. It's nice to nice to have you with us on Dune. Now, uh, as I watched it, Patrick, Patrick Stewart was on Dune. Yep. Suter, Suter from Voyager was on Dune. Matter of fact, he also played in Babylon Five as uh, one of the. Uh, uh, he was on Babylon Five as a one-off character too. You know who I'm talking about, landlord. Mm -mm. Suter from Voyager, first and second season. He was a beta. beta oh my gosh, Suter! Now I get it. The serial killer. What's that, Leanne? The serial killer. Yeah, the he was. He was yeah, the. Oh, I did not make that connection until just right now. What did yeah, you say, John? Brad Dorif. Um, as Peter DeVries, Brad Dorif. Yes. 
you know, the, the kind of guy where we, the only reason we let him act is because we're afraid of what he'll do if he doesn't. <laughs> oh, the shade, the shade. <laughs> um, Tons of Mice says Kenneth McMillan, who played Harkonnen, died in 1989. I have to say that he oh, yeah. was, his performance, I felt was the best performance in the whole movie. Um, <sighs> the Baron, uh, just because, I mean, his his character was just out there and the dude played it. He freaking played it. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. He, went, he went balls to the wall. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. Um, so that was, now, I thought his great character. Right, well, so wait, wait, Patrick Stewart. And then there was um, um, the guy, Brub Dorif, that we just talked about. There was the guy from Quantum Leap. Who else am oh, I oh, missing? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Dean Stockwell. Um, who else was there? There were so many people. <sighs> the, I'm the sorry, guy who, oh, and no. somebody's frozen. And somebody's frozen? Are we back? No? Am oh, I we're back? back. No, we're back. What'd you say, uh, John? Oh, uh, Jurgen Prock now played Duke Leto. He yeah, was he's been a Das Boot, which is a fantastic movie. He also. was in what? Das Boot. Oh yeah, yeah. He's been in something familiar. more recent though. Oh well, he was on in Seventh Son, wasn't he? I'm not the sure. The Seventh Son. Well, yeah, I thought. Well, he was in that, and then he's been in several things, uh, but more recent. I thought I'd seen him somewhere more recently. Yeah. Uh, of course, Sting. Can't forget Sting. No, we can't oh, yeah. forget. Chris, I'm I'm freezing and I don't know why. You want me to go back out and come back in? Uh, you might try. Yeah, you might try refreshing your browser. I see you freezing now. Yeah, you might refresh yeah. your browser and just pop back in. See yeah, if that helps. I'll do that. Sure. Well, we've grown a we mini bun. There you go. I got a magic right. button. It should be back in just a second. I got a magic button. There she is. Taking the back. And let's see if she goes up there. Hold on one second. It's supposed to put her back. There you are. Let's see if that works. Okay. Ta-da. I was just, yes. I don't know where we're up to, but we and you guys were, we were all in consensus on how well the actor who played um, the Baron did. Did, yeah. yes. It's okay. So committed, so good, so evil. I was uh, just pointing out. so. Yes, he was. I was just pointing out the other, the familiar faces who were so young. Dean Stockwell, oh, skinny as a yeah. rail, you know? Yeah, uh, young Kyle McLaughlin. Young Kyle McLaughlin. I know, right? The guy was, I don't know, very, and Sting, very young. of course, who... Sean uh, Young? Sting. Yeah, Sting yeah. weighed what? Like Sean a, young. Young, young, young. A young Sean Young. Sting was all at like 90 pounds. I know, right? <laughs> he comes out of that thing, he's all... <gasps> I will kill you! No, Dude, eat something. I am you the just, stick just figure of doom. Yeah, have, have lunch. lunch. Have a sandwich, dude. Have a sandwich. <laughs> um, but now yeah. the Baron, the, I don't know if you guys know this, and, and I don't know, John, if you've done the prequels that um, Frank Herbert's son did, um, Kevin J. Anderson with, um, uh, with, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So the Baron was actually quite handsome in his youth. Uh, oh, he, yeah. was, in, he was a handsome physical specimen he took great pride in his appearance so think of the sting character fade rautha but just a little, just a little bit more to him and just absolutely gorgeous and he crossed benny jesuit and they were like oh really <laughs> and oh, they really? they infected him yeah. if i'm remembering this correctly they either infected oh. him or manipulated his dna and there is no cure and he just kept getting bigger and bigger and sicker and sicker that's why his doctor's always there I see. I was I was wondering what was wrong with him. I thought it yeah. had something to do with the form in which he consumed uh, the spice. Mm -mm. No, no, he he. You no, know, him and the Benny Gesserit kind of. Yeah, you gotcha. don't you don't mess with the with the hooded chicks. <laughs> well, they had yeah. to get Jessica from somewhere. What'd you say? They had to get Jessica from somewhere. Oh yeah. I, now, I don't she... understand that. Well, she's a Benny Gesserit, and she wasn't supposed to. Well, have she's also, she's also the direct. You know, she's she's the daughter of Black Baron Harkonnen. Mm, I forgot that's that. that's how they are getting the the Harkonnen bloodline into the Atreides bloodline. Wait, 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 wait. So Paul's mother is the Baron's daughter. Yes. That, oh, I did not know that. That I now did well, okay. Baron know that? I don't think no. he knew that. Oh, I see. Okay, I didn't know that. The Desert are really, really big, and they, they say this very briefly, but you don't realize how deep this is. They are all about manipulating bloodlines to get a certain um, uh, outcome. 
Yeah, you know? yeah, and that's true. She wasn't even supposed to have Paul, you know, but she I knew fell that. in love, the things we do for love. Yeah, and then so she had Paul, <laughs> and that's why she lost her hair, right? But but I didn't realize it. <laughs> no, I mean, she was, well, I mean, that's how she Not got her exactly. hair back. She got her hair back by having Paul because she she had Paul. They kicked her out of the Benny Jesuits for having Paul. Then she could grow her hair. And then whenever she went back into him at the end, I guess she shaved her head. Yeah, again she threw the habit she back rejoined. on. I'm like, yeah. Because I'm like, is that a yeah, thing? Because I'd rather not be a reverend mother. Hey, John, do you have headphones? Because mm. almost everything you say gets muffled. I don't. Anytime. Ah, ah, we'll just bear through it. Yeah. Oh, here. Okay. I'm going to move closer to the receiver. Because normally oh. I have the external mic, but in the other room is yeah. that better well mm-hmm. we'll try it. it's what happens is when we're speaking your micro your computer puts the sound out and then your microphone mm-hmm. is muted because it doesn't want to have that echo oh, okay. right yeah so so it's going to muffle you or mute you every time we're both speaking at the same time or anyway uh, you know so now now maybe it'll be better though you're, you're clearer now we'll see how that goes maybe it's just clarity so um how long has it been since you've seen the movie john oh probably a year or two I got most of the lines gotcha. memorized, though. I know, right? <laughs> a- There's so many good ones. The Duke, the Duke will die before these eyes, and he'll know, he'll know that it is I, Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, who encompasses his doom. <laughs> it works well at cocktail parties, guys. It does. Just doing it here. I, I can't it's imagine. the only place I can say that. <laughs> well, you know, remember the tooth. Remember the tooth. Remember. The remember tooth. the tooth. Me and the Why? wife are like we're looking at each other. Remember the remember. tooth. What are we going to remember? The, the tooth. tooth. Later on, what are you forgetting? Don't forget the just cause. He just kept over and over, and then they'd get closer to his face, and then all the way up on his on his mouth. Remember mm-hmm. the tooth. And then I told the wife, I was like, you know, one of the things that kind of got me when I was a kid, I still did a little bit, was the whispering. <laughs> Oh yeah, anytime, all the internal monologue. Yeah, anytime they do an inter- internal monologue, it's always in a whisper format. Does Leanne right. like my joke? Did she think that <laughs> joke was funny? I don't know. John was late. He's a dick. You know, right. <laughs> <That one>. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. These well, kind of internal very, things. Very focused on like what's going on in the characters' minds as well yeah. as what they're saying to each other. So they were trying yeah. to bring that to a visual medium. I Didn't got necessarily it. work that great, but. Well, so, I mean, I also the, think there's a, there's a lot of story there. They had a lot to get through, and sometimes oh, that yeah. that that little yeah. internal monologue helped help. advance the story. If you yeah. had not read the book, or you're you're just a regular aud- uh, audience member seeing the film. Yeah, uh, well, it would have been yeah. awkward to just break straight out and say these things. So I guess is it, yeah, it really does help us understand the story. I totally get. You know, as far as what they, they call them the space opera, this really this is yeah. lives up to the whole. Story. Space opera. Oh yeah, kind of totally. I oh, walk yeah. away. I turn. I say something Great. dashing. Great. Don't forget me. I love you. You know, it's very. It was very like that. And I was like, wow, that's kind of yeah. How many about- times is he shouting, "Father, duty"? <laughs> well, it was. It was like watching a play. Yes. Being done like people were projecting for the for the crowd. Uh, mm-hmm. in, in a lot of, of yeah. course, the Baron guy, I loved him. He was my favorite. I'm not, I'm not knocking it. Good morning, Paul and grumpy old dude and tons of mice and lots of people showed up. I just want to say hi to everybody. No, um, well, yeah. Welcome to the Dune Fest. Yes. So who is your favorite character? If you have a favorite, who would you favorite? Uh, from the movie or from the book or from the series as a whole? I'm just going to let you pick. I've only seen the movie. So if you speak anything uh, outside of the movie, well, you're just. Blah 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 blah. It's a different right, and then, then you won't know what I'm talking about. And that's fine. So you're not answering just for me. There's a lot of people in the stream who know. So go ahead. I I don't care. Just then, whichever uh, one you. Well, who's your favorite character, dude? <laughs> hands down, my favorite character would be Leto the Second. Oh, oh. my deepest son. Arguably, to me, he is one, arguably one of the most interesting characters in like literally all of human literature. Wow, that's high yeah. praise, man. Yeah. Is he Children of Dune? Is he that is Children of Dune him? and God Emperor. God Emperor yeah. Dune, okay. Yeah, he's a little kid in Children of Dune, or rather they they upped his age in the miniseries and had James McAvoy play him. But like, he's nine years old in the novel. Um, but then, yeah, he he gets much older than that once he becomes the emperor. And oh man, what an incredible character! Is this is this Paul's grandfather? Uh, no, this is no. Paul. 
This is who? Paul's who? Paul's, Paul's son. son. Oh, his son. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, but named for his grandfather. Well, whenever you throw a yeah, letter in there, Paul. it threw me with the letter. Oh. The right. second. Mm. I, I get it in like, yeah, I get it totally. I get it. <laughs> yes, Beto the second. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so not only does he have his father's oracular powers, but he also has both male and female genetic memory from his ancestral line. Ooh. And he covers himself with baby sandworms and becomes basically invincible and takes <laughs> over the entire freaking universe and becomes like the ultimate predator, if you will. In, in the sense that he is like the sharpening tool to force a speciation event in the human race and get them to diversify and spread out into the world or into the universe. And he like selectively breeds his own descendants to be um, immune to prescience and invisible to psychics so that navigators and people like him can't track them down. Like it, oh, wow. it's insanely cool where the series goes and oh my God, yeah. Leto the Second is the most interesting character we've ever read about. So was Leto the Second written by the original author, or is that somebody yes. else? Okay, because I don't know how much was all, was all of this put out by the original author, or did the miniseries? How much yeah, liberty the original, did the uh, the original six novels are by Frank Herbert, and uh, and the miniseries is based on the first three books because we have the the first miniseries and then the Children of Dune miniseries, which. Enca encapsulates Dune Messiah and Children of Dune into one treatment. Which I didn't, I didn't see. I guess I, it, ah. I, I wasn't up for what I thought would be disappointment. Bless you. Ah. Um, well, um, it's actually better than the first miniseries. There's higher production okay. value and um, no more silly hats. Really? And so, where, you know, it's funny when you say, I would, I would ask where it's streaming because everyone says, oh, Netflix, meaning because everybody, oh. everything's on Netflix, but it's not. Um, yeah, I don't know if it is streaming anywhere. I, I bought it I, on DVD years ago and just kind of have it. Oh, uh, okay. Because I looked it up and it's funny. They, I run, I keep running into this thing where it says, yeah, it's on Hulu. And then you go get it, try to get it on Hulu. And it goes, well, no, you got to pay for HBO uh, Max in order to get it. And uh, it's like, it's like trying to order something from Target. And they go, yeah, you, we have it, but you have to pick it up at Macy's. Like, what? What was the series <laughs> called? <laughs> what are we doing? Children of Dune. I just oh, I ended up just getting it off iTunes. Like this is, you know. But again, yeah. I would like to see Children of Dune. Um yeah. and I'm looking forward to the movie because yeah. I love that they finally get that they're not trying to squeeze all into one movie. Like it's just it's yeah. too big. It's too so big. So where does the movie fall in the series of books? What what did, did we get last time? retelling of the first novel. First one. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, okay. So there's a lot. Yeah. Now, wait a second. I thought And the what? They're breaking it into two films. Yeah. The upcoming. Yes. Yeah. Okay, kind of like they broke the last Harry Potter into instead of seven, right. it was seven and eight. You know, so which was, you know, okay. Are they doing a re-imaging? Are they retelling of the book? Or, you know, it's like we watched Conan the Barbarian. I know what Conan the Barbarian is. We watched the new Conan the Barbarian. And I felt it was an unfortunate movie. And it had, I mean, it was, there was no. I don't know about it. I thought it was horrible. Yeah. Um, and I remember what going, I, I was telling the wife, I couldn't convince her to watch the original. The, 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 you know, after watching this one, you know, the original I thought was pretty good. It was like epic. It became like, uh, again, another one of those cornerstones in our sci-fi fantasy kind of genres. Um, the original, yeah. uh, but of course, just like many things, if I went back and watched it last night, we, we, it was easy to go, you know, it's 1984, not bad technology. You know, it was 19 whatever these movies came out and it was not so bad. So for the day, it's uh I think I think I'd have to let it go by and see. I am going to have to go watch it. Yeah, Just I can't I, do it with a wife. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I'm torn because there's some stuff you, it feels like canon. Just leave it alone. Right? Yes. But if I truly truly believe that, then we'd have no next generation, no Voyager, no Deep Space 9. So, but they didn't what they didn't do was redo the original. They just yeah. built it all and right. left. So yes. this would, this would be a very different thing. This is actually redoing the book, a reimagining um, of I, the book. And I think, yeah, it's not a remake of the first time. movie by any means. No, no. And I do okay. think it's time. It's time. Okay. Like okay, okay, we've we've got more going for us now. Yeah. Let let's. I'm I'm open. I'm open. Plus, um, Mr. Lisa Bonet's husband is in it. 
So that's the guaranteed oh, ticket well, see, sale that was, for me. That was the seller for the bar, uh, the Conan the Barbarian movie. That's why we watched it was because she knew he was in oh, it and she was willing to watch it. Oh. Yeah, he's in the, the newer bar, Conan the oh. Barbarian movie. All right, you guys, we're going to have to cut this short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that, was, that was that I remember about the new Conan is uh, Jason Momoa was in it. Yeah, he, he yeah. was in it. Playing Gurney Halleck in this one, so Gurney Halleck. What? The I mean, hell? Uh, uh, Duncan Idaho, rather. Sorry. The, okay, yeah, that. Uh, yes, the sword, the sword, the sword master. Yes. Oh, the one who was played by Patrick Stewart in the original or the that movie was, we watched. But, but no, I, I misspoke. He's playing uh, Duncan Idaho, who had a very minor role in the movie. Yeah. Dun- oh, I remember him. Yes, he uh, he. He looked like one of the guys who used to play on Buck Rogers. Like he, like he did a cameo. Right. Like yeah, he Duncan Idaho uh, doing a cameo. Yeah, yeah. We saw him a couple of times. He was yeah. One time he spoke to somebody, and another time he just kind of showed up and dashed off to the right. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was a Much lot of in the books. Yeah, there was a lot of oddness yes. about the movie that I watched. Um, we're sitting here in this scene. We're watching this scene over here, and we're then we're gonna be in this scene over here. They're kind of not related. You know how movies are. They just jump from place to place. And in between, they would show this scene of a couple of people walking down the hall. This guy here turning left down the hall. This guy coming out of a room. And then they would get back to a scene. And I couldn't. There was a lot of times I was like, I don't really catch any relevance as to why (laughs) they're doing this. You know, it's, Mm -hmm. you know, that was kind of odd. But so there there was that. (laughs) Maybe it was there was a reason why they would show these people, you know, between the cut scenes. Maybe it was to try to show us the passage of time perhaps um or i don't know if a they... sense of normalcy like hey here's some people in the castle and back to you R- maybe yeah, so like maybe yeah starting to feel safe you know in yeah. Aragon. you know well, I, I want them to feel secure when you sit down to a three-hour movie i just kind of assume they're going to be at some i mean they got a big story big big story to tell they're going to be a little economical with their with their shots and to One think that they're going to waste my time just showing this guy walk down the hall and this guy you know that's that's kind of what I meant. and then i saw what you were talking about where they replaced a scene because they showed mm. the same scene twice um they said matter of fact the second time they showed it was a little bit longer and it's where the guy we were just talking about comes down the stairs he, he killed somebody and he comes down and he starts taking over for the thing um so i did i did notice that but there was a lot of just kind of odd well oh, that's race. why it's considered an adam uh alan smithy cut it was kind <laughs> of a mess david lynch didn't want his name on on that version I understand that. Now that explains why people were asking that beforehand. Which cut did you watch or which thing did you watch? I saw that on Twitter. Uh, People were asking, I don't know. I saw the one with the boobies. (laughs) I don't know what else happened. I saw the one with the sand. A lot of sand. There was lots of sand and worms. Big worm? Reminds me of Friday. If y'all have seen Friday, it's big worm. Big perm? Big worm? Sorry. Um, Grumpy Old Dude asks, do you think they should remake 2001 A Space Odyssey? Nah, not really. Oh, God, no. It was okay. There's no reason to. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's not. It's not that good. Like no. I'm going back and redoing the effects for the end sequence to make it like make sense. Um, yeah. But but other than um, that, the movie's fine the way it is, really. Yeah. It, and it yes. doesn't need that update. Like if the, if there was something they wanted to do, that would be the thing to do. But don't remake. Yeah. I really, there's no reason to. No. Yeah, uh, yeah, we got some new. Have you guys either either of you seen the remakes remakes of the Lost in Space? No. You know, they had the movie no. back in the like 2000. It was just a movie lost in space. Oh, I do remember that. I thought that movie oh, no. myself was actually really good up to the really? end. I thought it had a horrible ending. The ending was just stupid. Sorry. Yeah, it really went off the rail. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Gary, what are you doing, man? You're fantastic. Yeah. I Well, what I thought he here? did good for that part. Um, it's yeah. just that at the end of the movie, the, the little kid is the old man played by the same guy we see in Deep Space Nine who played the traitor that Quark had to go get the the vats of tulaberry wine from. He had the red face. He's real, oh. real big and real mean. He's the guy who played the grown-up version of the little kid. And I was like, I totally oh, love the actor, but dude, that was such a horrible casting situation. And then it's supposed to go through this thing and back in time. It was just stupid. The ending was just stupid. The rest of the movie I love. I could watch it over and over. And over. Ha, 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 ha. But then there's a new series that came out. 
You right. remember? Yeah. And, and in the old movie, at least they came up with the movie I'm talking about. They had the ro robot. Eventually, we they, through circumstances, built a robot similar to what we're familiar with from the old thing. Danger Will Robinson with the big, sil you know, big circular head kind of thing. They actually sure. built that on the show. I thought that was kind of cool and nostalgic and whatnot, even though they had a more modern version of robot. In this new thing... There's this new series that came out about two years ago called Lost in Space. It's a series done by Netflix or something. Mm -hmm. It's one of these things is not like the other. And it's mm. this one. You know, it, it's like it opens a season into it with everything falling out of the sky. And you have to watch for like 10 episodes before you have any idea what the hell's going on. See, I, I hate that. I, I never got that far. Please don't confuse me for 10 episodes. Yeah. Because you, yeah. you, you, you're, you're thinking that I'm going to stay. I'm not. I understand life is short. <laughs> I'll give you I'll give you an episode or two to get your th life together. Yeah. After that, yeah. Mama's got things to do. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah, have, have either of stories where they begin? What's that? We should start stories where they actually begin. We yeah, don't need to like a few weeks earlier when they were alive, kind of thing. You know, I, yeah. I I feel like it's the director's version of being edgy. Like, yeah, mm. let's confuse the viewer. Let's like yeah. we can do all this stuff, and it's like. Yeah, well, you know, I get the I'm whole lost. In, no, not impressed. Yeah, yeah, I, I get the whole lost in space thing, but don't lose me from the beginning. That the, the it opens up right. with them lost in a crash, and you're like, what the fuck happened? How'd they get here? Who are they? You know, and you don't know. I don't, I don't like that. I didn't care for that. And then um, again, it wouldn't have been so bad if they'd have answered that in the first episode, maybe the second episode. But to think you got to hold, watch the whole first season before you find out what crash put them in that plot. I got no time. No time. Yeah. It reminds <laughs> so, me a little bit of Watchmen. Um, really? Again, and I'm not a Watchman. I, I didn't come in as a Watchman fan. I just, I mm -hmm. said, do I have, do I need to have backstory? Everyone's like, no, you'll be fine. And I wasn't fine. I wasn't fine. Right. Like every episode, I'm like, and just when I thought I was understanding, just when I thought there was some continuity, then five minutes later they go somewhere else. And I'm like, what, what just happened? <sighs> Where's my remote control? Pause. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen any yeah. of the series. I was a fan of the graphic novel. That, and, uh, and everybody that said watch it is a fan. All my friends are fans of the graphic novel. So yeah. I, I, you know, we do the best we can. We do the best we can. Although, again, I, I do think overall that said it was good. Um, I have, I do have my favorite, you know, episodes and the storylines that it, the story that it introduced, I thought it was great, but it's like, they, who they made me work for it. I'm like, yeah. am, I, am I getting a check from SAG? Am I, <laughs> am I getting residuals from the Screen Actors Guild? Because this is exhausting. Mm, right. mm. Hey, have, have either one of you guys, I'm watching a new series. It's kind of new. It's still running. Have you either one of you guys seen The Expanse? No. Oh, I just started I back it. with that. Man, I tell you, I watched like the first episode and there was so much going on. The first time I watched it, I was like, yes. oh, what the, what the hell's going yeah. on? I was like, oh, exactly. I don't want to watch this. I walked away going, Z -Z. Um, and but this time here, I heard other people saying it was good. And I kind of caught a couple of little things. I watched it. I am almost two whole seasons through it. And I am just, this is a good show. It's yeah. What are they up to now? Season four or five? They're fixing to start season five. So it looks okay. like they, they were, they had done three seasons like for the example, the guy who played uh, Doctor Bashir's dad, he plays um, some of my la la la's. I'm sorry, lady, I don't know your name, the oh, character's he name. He that. plays her her husband. He doesn't come back in the fourth season because they they canceled it after three seasons, and then he went and got another job, and then Amazon picked it up for season four when right, Sci-Fi right. canceled it, and whenever that happened, so they replaced it with a different. You know, but other than that, everything seems to be. I don't know what's going to happen. Are they going to change tone? I don't know. But so far, the first two seasons have been freaking awesome. Yeah, awesome. I actually had to go back because I stopped because it's taking them a long time to go. You know, do the new season, and I, you know, I just lost interest. Mm -hmm. So I feel like like I had to go back to sort of reacquaint myself. And I didn't redo the first season. I think I launched myself back into the second season mm -hmm. somewhere along the way yeah so i I've, I've really been enjoying that i will i may have a show just for that one i know this is a uh, uh dune day <laughs> and we'll get back right. over to Dune. because the next question right. for me obviously is where do i go from here we've got a, a two-part movie coming up there appears to yep. be too many series that i'm unaware of that i could go watch do i put myself through those i would not the really the, even the yeah. first one for the history well, it of it stings it's truer to the plot than okay. the David Lynch version. Like, because 
most of act two, so to speak, was done with like a montage of them just blowing shit up and him kissing Sean Young. Um, so like, <laughs> it skipped over a lot of material there. It and did. the new series does address a lot of the stuff that goes on in the desert with the Fremen. Um, so you get a better sense of what the story is actually about that way. I, I feel um, like I... David Lewis's version kind of invalidates some core concepts of the story, or violates rather. Um, so yeah, like what? Do want to it. Well, like having it, having Paul be a genuine messiah and having him like make it rain on Arrakis at the end of the movie. It's like, okay, first of all, you're gonna kill the worms that way. Right. Second, um, it's not that navigators fold space with the power of their minds, the, the engines of the ship do that. It's that their ability to see the future is what allows them to plot a course using faster than light travel so they don't just run into something. Um, so like that's not how that works. And also the, the core of Dune is that it's a deconstruction of the concept of a hero and human nature and how power bases, particularly religious power bases, function and it's it's all about the loss of self when you have the ability to predict the future and how you can get trapped in you know the narrow path of your own visions so like having him be an actual messiah rather than someone who's deliberately stepping in and taking advantage of a legend to be sort of an amalgamation between te lawrence and muhammad in space um like yeah, yeah there's so much more to the story than what came across in the film. I, I, I feel like after the first hour and a half, they went, yeah, we gotta wrap this up, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then it was just this sort of, you know, the care that yeah. they took at the beginning, they kind right. of fell off. Because they literally went from, okay, we're gonna use atomics, and they put on the hoods, and then after that, okay, now we're back on the worms. I'm like, wow, that was a yeah. really, fast costume change gentlemen. if i may yeah. if i may I, I just want to point out we watched that part and they put on the, the the eye shields the whole frontal so they could watch the atomics and there was no atomic explosion the wall just kind of <laughs> fell <laughs> apart there was no big boom there was no flash there was no nothing it was just the wall crumbled and now the frontier is down or whatever that was, and they took that was the in thing. the outtakes <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so there was things like that. The one thing that really got the wife <laughs> when we were watching it, <laughs> she just laughed out loud, he hawed. When when they got to the point when she the, he first runs into Patrick Stewart, and he's like, defend yourself, and he turns on his shield, and that, <laughs> that, oh, yeah. that gummy bear, what is it? Uh, Gumby, the, you remember Gumby, right? Gum oh, yeah, yeah. Gumby, that's what it kind of, those shields kind of looked like, was Gumby, the character, just kind of, that was... <laughs> Yeah, those were hilarious. That was that. Yeah, that was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, Mr. Bill! I can't do the voice anymore. I used to be able to do it as a kid. Yeah, it's Mr. Bill. Yes, there you go. Uh, and then the tower no, yeah, comes that, that is, and and then the 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 fail is that you the shield can be penetrated by the slow knife. And it's yeah. like, right. what are you doing, everybody? <laughs> well, the Let's bullet wasn't a slow knife. No like, um, the, resist. The bullet the force the of gravity and inertia. So, uh, you know, stabbing it quickly, it'll deflect that force. Uh -huh. But if you're just kind of sliding it in there, it, it doesn't repel it. But 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 then some guy comes along and shoots a bullet at him, and it goes slowly right there and kills ah, the well, other that's, guy. That's the guy that's what's that? It's got a little that? computer in it, so it can sense that there's a suspensor field there and, you know, alter its velocity. There you go. Yes, Ooh, the slow, the slow. You should move <laughs> when you see that happening. I'm just saying, there's a thing coming through. No, it's. I get it. I get it. It was, but um, those kind of things. But again, it was 1984, probably 83 yep. when they were were going through the production of those scenes. So absolutely, you know, for what it was, it was it was a lot of fun, a nostalgic sci-fi fun. Again, yeah. though, going forward, I'm really I got I got some hopes for the story for the movie. But there did seem to be a lot of similarities between. Star Wars. I can't. I'm trying to think of what they were right off the top of my head. But I remember me and the wife last night were going, "Isn't that kind of a direct ripoff of Star Wars?" And that I don't know. And they're doing this too. There was well, I can't remember. Fair, it came out in '66. We did look that up. 
We did look for the, and that's where yeah. we were questioning about how close did this stick to the books and how much of it, because this came out in 84, 10 years after Star Wars. So the books right. came out 10 years before Star Wars. The mo- mm-hmm. This movie comes out 10 years after Star Wars. You say this doesn't stick necessarily to the books or the other things are more close to the books. How much did the the directors and writers of this story take from the notions of Star Wars? You know, but then there Probably was the obvious. Lot. Like, really, the only, aside from Tatooine being a desert planet and there being that, like, giant space slug thing in Empire Strikes Back and, like, the offhand reference to the spice mines of Kessel, other than that, there isn't really really that much that's all that in common, aside from, like, you know, the visual representation of certain locations. Yeah. You know, like, the the Jedi are similar to the Bene Gesserit. you think but like, so? Yes. Well, yeah, maybe. We um, at least thematically. I mean, the, the Jedi have telekinesis where the Bene Gesserit's powers are much more subtle. Yeah. But, I mean, they still, they still use something very similar to force persuade. Yeah. And things like that. Like, yeah. it, like, if you gave a Bene Gesserit a lightsaber, they'd know what to do with it. They just True. don't use the force. Well, I guess I would... And they are in uh, order. Do you like yeah. a, a very particular yeah. well, a, that a was group one of people things... with a particular set of skills? Okay, so here's the deal that kind of confused me about the art. Right, so Paul's mother is grown for her, you know, she's the best Benedict and Genoa's or whatever, the best student this witch had ever had, right? That's what she said. But wait, she are right, so thousands of years ago they created two different schools, the Bene Gesuit school and the guild. And yeah. the Bene Gesuits and I'm talking, hold on. the Bene Gesuits intentionally breed people. We've already talked about they intentionally breed lines of people to create certain mental tel- tel- abilities within their their school of people. That's their whole bag. That's right. why they're witches. That's why they have these mental abilities. The other school does not do that. They're the trade guild and they do all these other things. That's where the Baron came from. So that doesn't really make sense that the Baron's daughter would come from or the, that, that the one of the most powerful Bene Jesuits who was not g- bred genetically for a thousand years to be telepathically superior would actually be telepathically superior and be the best uh-huh. student she ever had. Um, and then also be the father or the mother of Paul. Does that make sense? I'm not sure. Okay. First of all, you're frozen. So well. You're frozen. I don't know where to attack this from. <laughs> but you... It's fine to me. Um, but the the guild, the guild is a different thing because they. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. The guild is a they, different thing, so it's unlikely he would. And, um, you know, navigation, but they are still immersing. You know, their their navigators are still totally immersed in spice gas, which essentially speeds up their evolutionary process so that they. Ad- can physically adapt in one generation to a zero G environment where they're, you know, swimming around in a viscous gas, gaseous substance. Um, so like they, the guild has nothing to do with the Harkonnen line. They just have, um, the Harkonnens just used to have the Chome directorship to mine the spice on Arrakis. That's wow. their only real connection with the guild. Right. So what's um, the connection between the, the Harkonnens and the, um, uh, Bene Jesuits. The Bene Jesuit oh, witch that visits the, the uh, tra- uh, House of Atreides is actually from the Emperor and not from the Baron. Well, so she is specifically the Emperor's truth sayer. Like, that's her, that's her, her job. job. But she's mm-hmm. also high in the echelon of the Bene Gesserit order. Right. right. So, so she's I, the Emperor's I, I, advisor. Um, but are, they, they basically, they wanted to cross um, the, the Atreides and Harkonnen lines because of certain... Uh, Okay. Uh, dominant and recessive traits that they had projected would have a beneficial um, <laughs> mutation uh-huh. um, that they could lock in to hopefully produce the Kwisatz Haderach in right. a couple more generations. They were hoping to get a daughter out of Jessica that could be bred to Fade Routh Harkonnen and create the Kwisatz Haderach that way. But, you know, Jessica disobeyed, had a son, and produced something else entirely. Well, it actually produced a Kwisak cataract, right? Yes. Oh, but like, yes. He's and, more, and, a lot more than the Bene Gesserit we're hoping he would be. Well, that's one yes. of the things I thought was kind of ironic about the deal is that she, as, as the <laughs> lady mother, the high priestess or whatever, 
she was upset with Paul's mother because she had turned away and not done what she was supposed to do. She lambasted right. her. She said, you were my best student ever. And yet you screwed up and you had a boy instead of a girl. You're not supposed to do that. You're not good enough to have, be the mother of the Jezha cataract kind of guy. And yet she just got finished saying this lady was the best student she ever had. Who is more likely to be the mother of this prophesied person? If not this now, of course you say his that daughter. Wasn't, that wasn't her role. Well, it was yeah, actually, was this, it turned out, it turned out being so, but not the way that they wanted. They wanted right, someone right. that they could control. They couldn't. Right. Control. And what about him is saying right there isn't necessarily true. She's trying to be hurtful. Yeah, that too. Well, the, yeah, yeah. And then, but she's given the charge of killing him. Yeah. Well, she's given the charge of killing him and she has the opportunity to kill him and she doesn't. Mm, yeah. You know, um, right at the beginning, she puts the thing up to his neck. She could have just stabbed him right there and said, you know what? The dude pulled his hand out of the box. Sorry. <laughs> right. She could have done that. And then she was already under the charge. To Matter of fact, I think that's what she was hoping for was that he would pull his hand out of the box so she could kill him. Oh, yes. You know, right. So why didn't you just kill him anyway? <laughs> the problem solved, you know. And then, of course, they had those little sneaker thing come in. I mean, it's it's just interesting. I just I just didn't understand the relationship between how Harkonnen would have a powerful witch child who they could use to breed well, with he didn't, Atreides. He didn't raise that child. He didn't know she got. This is genetics. Right. They. I. I, I want to say yeah, it was Helen. Her. It might not have been. She got pregnant and left. You know, yeah. and also infected him. Yeah, um yeah. it's double, interesting double double yeah um yeah. Yeah. and, and they are manipulating both harkonnen and atreides bloodlines for you know several thousand years already this was the culmination of a long multi-generational project mm -hmm. yes. yeah which they explore more john i don't know if you're a fan of the prequels have you read not particularly i like i I enjoyed the Butler and Jihad trilogy well enough. Yes, yes, uh, I like that as well. Didn't really like the initial prequel trilogy very much. There was a lot of stuff that was like really, really incongruous that bothered me. And then, um, then I read the the one, the two that came after Chapter House, and that was it. That made me completely lose interest in reading any more of the um, supplemental material, as it were. Was yeah. the supplemental material also written by the original author or no? No, it's by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. And, yeah. you know, they it's decent sci-fi in its own right, but trying to connect it directly to Dune, it kind of doesn't fit. There are certain things that just don't work at all. And then, like, when you're at the end of the series and they're clearly shoehorning, you know, references to their other series into it, and it's like, okay, that's that's definitely not where this story was supposed to go right because you're, you're like very directly contradicting some things from the previous you know from the final novel right right well, well, I, I, I guess because i i read dune and then i read the prequels because the the rest of the books in the dune series are a labor of love like yeah. whew, this is not light reading this is okay i went to college whew. Let me roll up my <laughs> sleeves and do this. Yeah. I mean, Dune is an investment. You know, when you it meet really people, is. okay, first, if you've read Dune, yeah, okay, you get your patch. If you've read all the other books in Dune, oh my goodness, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, I own all that's the amazing. They're like my favorite books ever. I love it. I love it. And and it's crazy. That's how I feel about the prequels. Like like you said, the the Butlerian Jihad, you know, House Atreides, House Harkonnen, uh, Harkonnen uh, House Carino, just the history of the houses and the fact that they weren't always enemies. Yeah. And that it's the it's a, a, a House Harkonnen daughter uh, who you can all, she's credited with creating voice. Like she, mm -hmm. that's how the Bene Gesserit started using that. That was a Harkonnen, I won't say Harkonnen, but it was a Harkonnen daughter who, and she, I remember that. That, that chick was fierce. Mm -hmm. she, like she manipulated her way into being the head reverend mother of the Bene oh, Gesserit what? order, which really kind of focused how the direction that they went. It's, I find it fascinating, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. just the addition of the backstory. And that they were friends, like two. I I can't remember their names, but you know when they were fighting uh, the war against Atreides. the machines, and Atreides yeah. and Harkonnen were friends. They're like what? Yeah. And then to watch how that devolved, 
part yeah. of it for real reasons. Part of it is because people are petty. And then, you know, you get two or three generations away and it's like, I hate your family. I don't know why. Well, th- does it all have to do with spice or just a certain part of it? Because in the prologue, it says in the year um, 6,000 and then it goes in the year <laughs> 10,000. I mean, we're talking thousands, thousands of years are going on here. There's no surprise yeah. that houses get these guys like these guys, and then they war with these people, and this happens, and this happens. Right, I mean, it, right. we're talking thousands and thousands of years. The one, the uh, stage three oh, navigator yeah. said he'd been alive for four thousand years. So, do you, does anybody know what are are these people supposed to be humans from Earth? Yeah, they Is, are human, but like Earth doesn't exist anymore at this point. No. Does it it's ever like clarify that? In the realm of myth? Yeah. Okay, because they've got the years. They, they got 6,000 years. It just doesn't give us a reference to what? 6,000 years oh, uh, BC? Yeah. It's BG. So it's 10,190 years after the foundation of the guild, after we, you know, spread out into the universe. It, it's like after the Butlerian Jihad and after we can, like, safely travel between star systems. Right. Long, long, right. yes, yes. Yeah, so yeah. it's more than 10,000 years into our future. Sure. Yeah. Now, now this brings up a question. Early in the movie, like in the first ten minutes, whatever, they have this oh. weird dialogue exchange where I was just on it. A lot of machines, yes, a lot of machines, and then they just move on. Like what? Yeah. That? Now, now, if you know, if you've read the prequels, then you get it. Like okay, because right. yeah, the House of X was very, very prominent. But I'm like, why did they shoehorn that in yeah. for what feels like no freaking reason? Like yeah. I think it's fan service. You know. Because, like, mm. just because David Lynch knows what's going on doesn't mean the audience does. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. He, he will like to, you know, drop little things so the people who have read the book will be like, aha, I got that reference. Yeah, well, and I got it. I just didn't know why it was there. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, okay, we're going to talk more about X. We're not? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Had we uh, not known not about the, had we not watched a prologue and been told that at one point people gave up and let robots do everything and then other people with robots come and conquer there. had we not watched the prologue or the version without the prologue we had no idea what that was all about. see my version didn't yeah. have that oh yeah yeah and it does, one of the things like i said the prologue never stops and goes the prologue is over now you're watching the movie it never does that yeah. it just kind of goes and it goes you're like matte painting to this it tells a story That's it tells so funny. the emperor and it shows a picture of the emperor there and then a little while later it's still yeah. ta- showing the prologue the voice is still going and then the emperor starts talking and moving and, I, and then at that, at that point i guess you're in the movie but it doesn't it's really hard to tell That's when the hilarious. prologue stops and the show starts that's why the yeah. joke on the wife works so well because yeah. <laughs> and did, yeah. did, did anybody ever get the feeling that Erlon was going to marry Paul who is Erlon that's the chick in the, in the monologue the emperor's, the, the, pretty, the emperor's daughter pretty blonde woman oh but in, oh. in his version it's some guy doing the narration for the prologue so I thought you were gonna say oh. some guy married Paul <laughs> oh he doesn't have Erlon yeah Virginia really. Madsen doesn't do the the oh. prologue intro in the uh, TV cut we saw two completely different movies, Chris. Well, I, th- I actually did thought I thought I did see the blonde lady at the beginning yeah. oh, she's talking in about there. yeah talking about this is what happened or I, I saw her at oh, least well, a little in the, bit. In the beginning is a very delicate time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, no, I don't know. We bring we bring ten thousand one ninety one. I no remember them saying that. The Parsha Emperor Shaddam the Fourth. Oh. <laughs> No, I think in our version I'm that was. I'm loving all of this. In that version, our version when I saw that was voiced by a man. No, mm. my, the, yeah. the film version was her. Yeah. And yeah, I, it's I, like I, I don't. Out and in. Oh yeah, really? And she ends up marrying Paul. It's for you know political reasons. He right. never sleeps with her, of course, yeah. because he loves Cheney. Um. And she, What's that got to do with it? <laughs> Sorry. Well, because he can't <laughs> let her out royal heir. That would give her way too much power. Hey, there's I, there's different methods of preventing that. I'm just saying. I'm just listening. I, I like I like the direction that he went with that. But then she ends up writing the histories. You know, oh, we, that's how is that we why get, she was narrating. Yes. Yeah. Oh. She she begins telling the story of this is who he is. This is what happens and. Eventually, her family turns against her. Mm. Um, yeah. 
yeah, because the because the emperor falls and it's it's oh yeah, it's just you know such a fall from grace. How do you go from emperor to be a nobody? Hmm. Like usually you go you you're emperor and then you die. He didn't. Well, you lose all your film directorships. Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know, uh, uh, well, teenager from the middle of nowhere. <laughs> You know, one of the things that I thought was a little odd at the beginning of the movie was that they're they're like, and this is Emperor somebody somebody the fourth. He is the most powerful man in the universe. And then he yeah. goes, a stage three inspector is coming here to talk to me. What do they want? What do they want? And I'm like, dude, calm down, man. Have a stiff chin. You know, really, at, at the very beginning of the movie, the guy's all freaking out because these the stage three engineer. Is coming right. to see him. What does the stage three want? They're going to ask questions. What do they want? You know, or I'm sorry, they're going to ask questions. What do they want? Because you know how they do that. <laughs> the whispering. The, <laughs> the whispering. whispering. Uh, but you know, he's all panicking and just shitting himself. And I'm like, dude, really? And so if the, he's the most the emperor, powerful guy in the universe, why isn't he running the engineers? The the whatever well, they're called. Well, again, it to me, this is almost sometimes a commentary on capitalism. This is like he's he's the figurehead. He's very powerful. He cannot maintain that power without the support of the guild. There is an the understanding businesses. that gotcha. the spice must flow. Business must continue. If you can't do that, we will get somebody who can. Well, throughout this show, though, or, or throughout the narration, at least, it made it very specific to say, and I, and I kind of keyed on it. It said, in this time... Spice is the most valuable thing ever. I kind of, the way they kept phrasing it, I got the impression that if you knew the entirety of the universal story, Spice isn't a big part of it throughout all of it, but maybe it no, is. No, no. What'd you say, John? It's not so much in um, the like Butlerian Jihad trilogy, but it is, it is very essential to the rest of the original series. It, it well, it would be later on um but only to a certain degree right okay and, and just... before spice it used to be bourbon um but that was <laughs> centuries centuries earlier and then they there you evolved go. the spice there you go well, i was, like, I was just kind of wondering navigate without spice no you know, they That's have true. to be able to go into that trance otherwise they're just going to steer into a star and um you know between the guild having monopoly on interstellar travel and the chome company controlling the source of Milan, she basically have the transport industry yeah. and an allegory for OPEC. And yeah. um, so like, it doesn't really necessarily matter who's president or who's the emperor or whatever, because these, uh, these independent corporations control the flow of resources. Mm -hmm. yeah. so did you have over the emperor's head? What did the Atreides control? Um, well, they started with their fiefdom on Caladan, so it was like, you know, Sioux stones and, you know, fish products. And, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, one, one's fish. got space travel, the other's got spies, and the Atreides got fish. Yeah, well, that, that was what they have they on Caladan. Were... Yeah, they, I mean, yeah. mind you, there were many, many other houses in the lands red. These are just the yeah. ones that were focused on. Um, so the Atreides were indeed a very uh, a powerful and respected family, as were the Hark Harkon Harkonnens at one point. Um, yeah, I don't. Their house just really devolved. They, like in in the in the prequels, they take such a far tumble. You actually feel sorry for them. Yeah, really? I do. Yeah. Yeah, they really it just gets really messed up. And are the uh, prequels all books? Yes. Okay. Yeah, no movies there's the no prequels? there's no video of it. And I did it on audio. I'm like, I'm so oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bought the audio books. I actually got them. I got a couple of them at Dragon Con because they have they go and they have the booth set up of all the you know the Brian Herbert, Kevin J. Anderson novels and they talk and you know, blah 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 blah, whatever. Um yeah, no, I'm 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 all in. I'm totally <laughs> Well, I, I'm looking forward. I, I, I do want to see the new movie. And I was surprised, yeah. though, that the my wife actually sat and watched through this one with me. Um, she she you, claimed to not you, like it, but she watched the whole thing. And we had you, the, very I, I, Your wife sounds amazing. Did you have a clause in your vows about science fiction? Because... <sighs> Well, yes and no, no. <laughs> well, you know, she when we met, she liked Harry Potter. She was familiar with it. She didn't like Star. She didn't like science fiction, 
particular. Huh. Uh, she had seen some of the original generation, the next generation when it came out. So she liked Picard and it was through Picard that I was able to get her to watch the next year. But before that though, to get her in sci-fi, one of the first things I tried was Firefly. She was a little sick. I got her to watch it, but she didn't really get through it at the time very well. And then we watched Battlestar. She really enjoyed the remake of Battlestar Galactica. Uh, After that, it was like, you know, you're really into this sci-fi. Oh, uh, Farscape. She enjoyed Farscape, too. Uh, the romance part that went on with Farscape. There's a lot. That, and I was like, well, there's more to it. So so through those experiences, I was able to get her to rewatch The Next Generation. She liked it. it the Next Generation is my least favorite. You know, Deep Space Nine is my favorite. So then we watched Deep Space Nine. And then we watched Voyager, which kind of keyed on specifically with her because of the strong female characters. Yeah. Um, and, you know, these kind of things. So I got her all the way into the sci-fi. We watched Babylon 5 after after Voyager because we wanted to watch the newer Star Treks, but we didn't want to change eras, you know, from when they were made. So we watched Voyager, Babylon 5, then Enterprise. Babylon 5, that's a powerful, that's a slog to get through that first season. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But, yeah, yeah, your but, Babylon 5 badge is huge. It's like, what? That's right. That's right. <laughs> but then, you know, uh, then we tried. We're still not. We still have not gotten back to Vo uh, Enterprise yet. Matter of fact, we canceled our CBS because <laughs> we're just not right now watching it. We're watching other stuff. I'm watching Expanse on uh, Amazon, and she and I are together watching Frontier. Have you guys seen from? Have you seen Frontier? Not at uh, all, Leanne. No, Lord? no. Uh, we gonna go back to what you just said. You have not finished watching Enterprise, sir. You canceled your CBS. I I can't work under <laughs> these conditions. Well, the deal was was that we we do know that we need to finish watching them. We we watched. Yeah. We did stop Enterprise so we could watch the Orville. Uh, then oh, we they, went back. They, is there a new season out? No, 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 no. This is so we could get caught up for the oh, first two seasons, okay. right? Okay. So then we watched watched the Orville. Then we went back and started Enterprise again. We're like, oh man, really? Um, Archer's gonna walk in and strut and complain about how these people don't live up to Federation standard again? You know. Anyway, uh, he's naked again, again in the underwear. Anyway, so we right. tried to get into that, and we're like, you know what? Let's just skip this and watch Discovery. So I'll have some stuff to talk through with Miss Leanne Lord, and then we watched Discovery. It worked. We we have had plenty of show fodder. Have we not <laughs> good or bad positive true uh but then and then we were like well we gotta watch picard but i watched picard and i want to step away but the reason why i ask you miss leanne lord if you have seen frontier it's about jason momoa playing a guy back in the 17th century when they're trapping bears oh, or not bears I did. but I did beavers watch that. i watched the first couple first couple episodes my, my, my heart couldn't take it yeah, yeah. I was, I'm not insured for that level of sexy for that duration. Like, <laughs> yeah, it looks like they only did three yeah. seasons. Yeah, no, it was good. It was about. I'm also not, but I'm not a frontier chick. I'm just, yeah, I'm not yeah. a roughing it kind of girl. I'm like, if we're gonna, yeah. I mean, my, in my fantasy, I like to be able to press buttons and shit works. Like, I just that. <laughs> That's just, well, you know, you asked you asked about me and the wife and how we work our sci-fi thing. Well, I I I do kind of sort of like that era, sort of, but I really want I'm, I watched it to sh have it be a shared experience with me and the wife. She watched it. She really likes it. Jason Momoa. She enjoys the story. It's it's. I mean, it's like a to me, it's like a seven on the story scale as far as that era. It's good stories. You know, it's got its things. I enjoy it. I wouldn't have watched it though without her. It's like trading of, you know, okay, you've watched seven seasons of three different series. I'll watch these three seasons of this little frontier thing. You know, it's not, yeah, it's yeah. not, no. yeah, yeah. It's not you really a give and take. I, I admire that. Cause like when I come across guys, you know, on, on dating apps and they're not sci-fi fans, I swipe left. Cause I'm like, I don't have time for you, sir. Yeah. We I'm are not. Our, you. That's right. Our <laughs> secret handshake is not the same. Yeah. It's, right. There's, it's just different. I feel like this, and they don't know what I'm talking about. Right. That's a good. Right. Yeah. We have a problem. Like I actually have one dude. I think he finally he's been messaging me. Finally read my bio. Finally, and he goes, "Oh, so like you know Star Trek trivia and stuff." <laughs> he's <Yeah. still> watching. <laughs> hmm. Really, sir? And I said, <laughs> if you mean, do I know trivia? Am I a fan of the entire? franchise yes is there something that you like that people express mild contempt for <laughs> yeah and his response? he apologized oh, good. Uh, yeah well how far how far i i just lee in you're just one of those people who you radiate star trek oh, i wait, can't how do you miss it? How do you, i know I, listen 
I'm I'm honest about two things in, in my dating apps. I'm honest about my age. Because I'm like, if you want babies, I'm not your girl. I'm not in the baby making business. Uh, if, that's, if that's still on your agenda, you better go find some other girl with some mm-hmm. eggs. Um, my eggs are, are, are busy. Uh, and my sci-fi-ness, my, my fandom. I yes. post pictures of me in my Star Trek necklace, which I'm usually always wearing. I post pictures of me at Dragon Con. I'm like, you need to know what yes. you're getting into. And ideally... Like you don't have to watch all the same stuff I do. You need to know what I'm talking about. If you can't do this, I don't. I'm not. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Here we go okay, I got I got another shirt here. Oh, T. Earl Grey. Right. Oh. Now this is I, the catch on this one. Me. Now I told you we watched Star Trek together while we were watching the Next Generation. I know you're gonna think I'm crazy. You you may even think I'm 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 telling you a lie. While we were watching that show, my wife actually took up the habit of drinking. Earl Grey tea. So she'll How get you not? tea, she'll put it in the what? microwave, nuke it, and drink her. And so we have matching tea Earl Grey hot shirts. I love it. I love it. Yes. yes. I, I do the same thing if I'm watching DS9, I have a Ractuccino. A Ractuccino. <laughs> <laughs> I just call my coffee Klingon coffee. It will be fine. There you go. Absolutely. Um, episode four of Star Trek Continues. Yes, people are talking about Star Trek Continues. I really need to just watch that. I, yeah. I have. Exactly pretty good it's pretty good you know i have almost i know this is gonna sound crazy but because of all the things going on with discovery and with what's coming out with pike in their own episodes we've watched some of the original series it would not hurt a person to go back and watch the original series and the the pre-show if you're gonna watch discovery and what's the new one called above and beyond or whatever space boldly go or whatever the new one of Pike is going to be called because you're going to be seeing the old doctor the new doctor as he comes in eventually i mean i just i just think it's as long as they don't screw it up <laughs> so so now they're going to remake dune and whenever they remake dune they don't need the spice engineers because they now have warp drive and um they actually have teleporters right would you be pissed if that happened would you be yeah. pissed if they did that to your that's what they did to star trek when they came in with Discovery and they came in with that other drive that they stole from another oh. star, sci-fi series, uh, that's what I'm talking about. No, no, no. The mushrooms. no, no. So, so <laughs> whenever they go in with the next generation, or not the next generation, the continuance of Discovery and the rest of the other one that they're going to come out with, Pike. As long as they kind of don't do more of that crap and stick to the direction they were going, because those Klingons were really the first end of that first season. I was all oh, that was wonderful. I loved that. Ah. I love hearing the Klingon language spoken out loud in Discovery. Oh, I yes. do too. So really amazing. Ash Tyler, just the actor who does that, does a fantastic yeah. job. Cool. You know. Like it sounds oh. cool. Yeah, yes, he makes it, does. it sound yes, good. It does. And yes. I'm like, oh, did you just invite me out for a coffee? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny to watch some of Deep Space Nine or some of the older series, not, not necessarily Star Trek because you didn't see them, but Deep Space Nine, see some of those actors try it. You know, some yeah. of them did better than others, but it's not. And, you know, for those of you who don't know, Klingon is like a Yoda speak. My understanding yeah, is Klingon is... Sentence structure. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all backwards. And- and it's one of those languages I think you either have to speak it forcefully and passionately or not at all. It is not a yeah. mealy mouth language. Yeah. You yeah. need to speak, speak it plain and speak it with some you confidence. You got to go all in with, you know, yeah, the, totally all in. And, and projection from your voice. Klingon is spoken forcefully. Forcefully. Uh, yeah. With a pair. Um, Kelly yeah. Sellers says she just watched uh, Nomad episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, the original series. That's the oh, episode with. Uh, uh, the the what's the name of the guy who uh created warp drive? Isn't that the name with the guy who created warp drive? No, he's not in no, no. Oh, the older black gentleman. Oh, no, that, that's that's the M5 computer. Uh, Nomad was created by um, oh, oh, oh I'm thinking guy. of a very different episode. We're thinking Kirk different episodes. Like okay. Okay. Captain Kirk was his creator. Basically, it's Star Trek the motion picture in episode format. Yes, yes, uh, gotcha. Gotcha. The clean hey, Bible. Did you, know, did you notice that I actually use fairly frequently where it's just a picture of the nomad probe and it just says, non sequitur, your facts are uncoordinated. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. That, I See, I really should go back and watch the show. What were we going to ask this, Leanne? No, I was going to ask if you noticed that someone in the chat noticed your bat left. Oh, oh, uh, th- you know, they have, uh, yeah, the bat left. I love it. I so love that. So, 
I didn't have a ba- I have a batless. So um, cool. It's actually an anniversary present, is what it is for my wife. We, we celebrate our five year anniversary. Um, and that was what this is for. This is how much of a nerd I am. So, hell yeah. I'm just I love gonna, it. And you and know, then, what, it doesn't stay here. It doesn't live here in this, this the studio. It, it doesn't because it wouldn't really fit the rest of the morning show. Oh, right? yeah. So, yeah. for the rest of the week, it lives in my bedroom. It's the biggest weapon we have in the whole house. <laughs> so if I need it, I've totally got it. it. Guess I'm crazy. Totally you guys think I'm crazy. No, but it's, it's, damn it's straight. Wonderful crazy. If if I heard a, a window break at two o'clock in the morning, I would grab that mm-hmm. first. I would have no problem. I mean, it's real. It's not sharp, yeah. but it is real. And if you got hit with it, you would know you were hit. That's momentum. Damn. Yes. I actually saw, um, I guess it's maybe a couple of days ago, because I'm really burning through them, the Voyager episode where Bolana and her self-hating self um, mm. is confronted by Tuvok, and mm-hmm. he tries to get her to embrace Klingon culture, and he takes out the Batleth, and my boy is winging it around. I'm like, go Tuvok! Yeah. Like, he's got real Batleth trade skills. I'm like, wait, you a drill cam? What are you doing? That's, that's so right. horrible. See, that's what I liked about Tuvok. Tuvok was the security officer. He could have been a science officer, but he was a security right. officer. And mm-hmm. he knew stuff. Oh, yeah. He, he did stuff. Yeah. Now, Worf obviously did, too. Worf had all the martial arts things because the actor was actually into martial arts, too, is my understanding. But Tuvok right. would know stuff. I was very disappointed with the same character, the security, not the actor. Actor was wonderful. The character, the actor did the best of the, I'm not, I don't knock actors. I, I'm not characters. The security yeah. officer from Enterprise was unfortunate. He, he cried a lot. He whined a lot. He complained a lot. Oh, you know. It yeah, was, but it was the beginning, gentlemen. It was before we had standards. You would think we'd need right. rough and tumble people out there to do. Well, they actually did. They called the Makos in season three and four, right? right. They brought in the Makos, yes, uh, for that purpose to be that purpose. But I'm just saying, it was Tuvok was one of my favorite security officers. You know, I, I, I I'm up to um, the almost the end of season six, where uh, Seven of Nine is kind of being mom to these bored kids. Oh and I'm yeah. Like, and it just makes it everything stands out that everybody is super sciencey. Like everybody knows yeah. how to realign the warp core matrix. Everybody. Mm-hmm. Really? We, you know, um, well, on Starship there would be a lot of cross training, but it does seem excessive. It, it does. Right. Like well, even the kids. The kids are like, you guys know what you're doing. You just got yeah. here. Well, but see, they actually have Borg implants, and that was the thing that uh, oh, I hate. Yeah. That- interface directly with the machinery and do it with yeah. your brain. That and that was kind of the deal. We we have they do that yeah. in Enterprise uh, in Discovery too with Tilly. Tilly can do yeah. everything. She slices, she dices, she can do any neurosurgery to working on torpedoes and she's a cadet. Right. Mm. So, but yeah. but I get what you're saying about these kids. Well, see, that's the deal about Voyager because I don't want I don't want to continue on Discovery and be bad, Chris. I'm not like that. There's parts of it I like. Forgive me, but there's with Discovery or uh, Enterprise. I'm sorry. The next generation was about command, family command and structure. Voyager yeah. or Deep Space Nine was like the mechanics. It was the mechanic, the grow your sleeves up and get shit done mm-hmm. kind of shows. There was there was sci-fi stuff. There was Jadzia did the sci-fi stuff, but it was more of a, you know, because that was what they had on the station. Voyager was the most technologically sophisticated ship they had produced at the time. And it right. was all science. So if you watch episodes of Voyager, it's all the heady science. Oh, the warp cells and narrow the confinement beam and it was all about tachyon i mean so i that's how i see the three different shows one of them is about yes. uh, order structure and picard you know the command of a starfleet officer what it is to be that the other one's more of a mechanic show and the other one's more of a, yeah. a sci-fi mr mr yeah. bill bill well, nye voyager, the interesting board think, guy voyager What's is a lot of blah 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 nebula what? <laughs> That's right. true. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. blah. Really made something that didn't taste it. What? That's right. But, you know, they, the, one of the things about Voyager and the Deep Space Nine and, and Star Trek, the next generation, is that they stayed to the same universe that we know of Voyager or of the original yeah. series. It was further in the future, obviously, more advanced technology, but it was literally supposed to be the same. Dr. McCoy was on the 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 very first episode of the next generation yeah you know yeah, it was a continuance of the show that, that, that was kind of the thing they didn't change anything they, they stayed within their laws of their 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 show their studio that was one of the best things right. anyway 
<laughs> but with, but now, so now that's the question about what are they going to do back to Dune? What are they going to do with Dune? Mm-hmm. Is Dune going to be... See, no. that was the deal. I was all pissed off about uh, Conan the Barbarian. This movie sucks. And I went and read the thing. I was like, because it's not like the movie I knew as a kid. And I went right. and read the thing. And the thing says the movie is actually closer to what the book was than Conan I'm from perfect. 1984. And I'm like, yeah. well, shit, this is what the book was like? Well, the book sucked. You know, that, I can see why they would did what they did in 1984. I mean, that was my first experience also with James Earl Jones was Conan. Yeah, but I'm, I'm kind of a big James Earl Jones fan. What's that? Good old James Earl Jones. I love that yeah. guy. He won yeah. You know what, guys? We have done the hour and then some. I'm gonna. It's it's Saturday. I've got things to do because I'm going on. A, I'm actually taking a vacation from the show next week. Uh, yeah, we great. we might do Saturday because uh, I'll be back in in all better and stuff by Saturday. But as far as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I will be running pre recorded shows. I'll try to be in the chat. We're gonna be driving to Colorado for Monday. During the Monday show, we'll be on the road to Colorado. During the Tuesday show, I'm gonna be getting cut on during right during the show. In the show, it's it's just a little, it's nothing, it's nothing. It's just me, right? And the, the during the Wednesday, so I'll actually be in the chat talking from the hotel, up in the voice. And then okay. the Thursday, we'll be driving back. Okay. So Friday, which should probably be a normal regular show, Saturday will be probably a normal. We'll see what happens. But I want to let everybody well, know. Good that's luck. Safe driving. You. Good luck. Thank you. Looking forward to hitting Colorado, getting out. You know what? I have been, everybody else has been pinned up since what? April? March. March? Yeah, yeah mine started in February because I, me and the job did this in February. Uh, so I've, I've had, you know, that much more. I'm ready to get the hell out. <laughs> so, yeah. And yeah, then I've been I'm doing like, the, the morning show. The- I've been doing the morning show every day for six months, minus Saturdays, you know? So there's no days off. I'm ready for a break to take a break and I hear you. stuff. There. So, thank you again, Miss Leanne, for joining us. Yes, I'm yes, glad you enjoy no, your thing you for, the, for the dude, uh, doom nerding. This was awesome. Yeah. Yes, and we'll have to, well, of course, we'll we'll try to change it up again. We can't always start tra- talk about Star I Trek. Know. Yes, we can. Chris, shut your whore <laughs> mouth. We can always talk Star Trek on the show. <laughs> As fans of the show, we have. Um, Almost a responsibility to insert it into normal conversation at any and every that's opportunity. True, that's true. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I, the yeah. Needs of the outweigh the needs of the few or the one. Of course. I, yeah. I joke all the time that I've, I've already known how to do social distancing because I do this and this space between us is yes. the neutral zone. I'll I tell you what. Childhood. That's right. If you scream, there are four lights at anybody, that'll do some social distancing. Yes. There are four, four lights. lights. Not one or two or three, that's but my, that's four. That's my public nerd test. There are four <laughs> lights. And anyone that's over no. here, I'm like, yes, yes, there are four lights. I'm like, hello. Okay, you know, this is kind of where my wife has been a little bit surpassing me and it's getting a little annoying is that I'll be talking about something. I was like, you know, did you see this? They lit up the thing and she's like, there are four lights. I'm like, oh my God, woman. <laughs> she didn't even know what it was. <laughs> she's been assimilated and now she's your board queen. She is. That's, oh, yeah. I love that. That's wonderful. Go for it. Mm. It is. My biological and technological distinctiveness will be added to her own. That's yeah. kinky. Anyway, Isn't moving it? on. <laughs> yes, moving on, moving on. We have a Saturday, the rest of our Saturday and our weekend to get to, gentlemen. That's right. We do. We do. Thank you all, guys. I appreciate you. Thank you to everybody in the chat. Thank you, John, for coming on and nerding Dune with us again. Um, oh, you know, yeah. when does the movie come out? We'll have to we'll have to all watch the movie and redune. It's supposed to come out on my beloved's birthday, so I'm like really excited. All right, what day is that? Uh, December 18th. Oh, that's a long oh, way. Nice. Well, that's all yeah, right. Yeah. We have Christmas special. Okay, guys, I am off to save the world with my batleth. I just don't have my batleth. Right. Right. Y'all have a great oh, weekend God. and take care. Kapla. Bye, you guys. Nanu Nanu, thank you for watching the show. A special shout out to my gold level Patreon supporters, the Blazing Wizard Pope, Ian Davenport, Cindy Plaza, and tons of mice. Thank you and have a great day.